pitching ninja Rob Friedman joining us right now. Uh, Rob, great to see you. And obviously, you're on the other end of the spectrum. You know more than just about anyone when you're asking questions to pitchers because you're actually sometimes giving advice to pitchers and helping them improve their game. So how has your offseason been? It's been great. Not much of an off season. I mean, I still do stuff every day, but yeah, honestly, it's been pretty good. Okay. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so let's start with one of the reasons that, you know, I thought of you and was like, ah, we haven't had Rob on in a minute. We got to get him back on. So you dominated one of our conversations the other day with the y- Yamamoto uh, javelin conversation. So I wanted to get your insight on when you posted that, what the feedback was like and what your personal opinion is on if javelins will take over the baseball world. That is a great question. So I, I did post it and I thought like everybody was like, first, what is this? And then how can I get one? Because it's cool. Like they just want to throw javelins. You know, who doesn't want to throw javelins, right? Like it's fun. <laughs> what can go wrong? Um, but I think it's kind of, it's a neat way to train. Um, I've tried to throw it. I have one sitting right here. If you want to see it, look at that. Yes. This is. Oh, it definitely official- has dirt on it too. It does. Mm. I was throwing it and I suck at it. I can't throw that thing worth a darn. <laughs> is it heavy? Uh, it's my guess is it's about 10 ounces, maybe a little less. Oh. It's mm. not that big. Um, but all right, so you look at it like even back in the day, Tom House had Nolan Ryan throwing footballs, right? So it's just another way to throw, another way to have another, you know, a, a different throwing mechanic to maybe make you feel like you're using your body a different way. I know Yamamoto loves it because he said that it reduces strain on his elbow and has taught him to throw a little bit less with his elbow and more with the rest of his body. But, you know, it's one of those things. We always tell kids to play multiple sports, to be athletic, and it's another way to be athletic. Is there any medical research? Obviously, it's just popped on the scene. No medical research. And to say that, it's just what he feels like because there's going to be people that are going to watch him in L.A., And they're going to be like, I'm getting a javelin. And then they're going to go out and they're going to throw it. And this thing is going to be leading here with their throwing. And same Tommy John injuries that that we have across the board. I did it with the javelin. Yamamoto does it. Yeah. And it's not like any throwing is all that safe. Like anytime you throw anything, absolutely. There, you know, you have to be careful. It is a, you know, it's a different throwing methodology. Maybe it puts strain a little differently on other aspects of your body a little bit less on your arm there has been studies by like driveline um you know they've done some stuff with javelin and javelin throwers looking at how they use their lower half um there are there is a uh you know like a subcategory of pitchers that do throw javelins they just aren't out there everywhere i know a lot of his teammates were throwing them felipe alou back in the day was a javelin thrower so it's not like there isn't a history of baseball and javelins but it's kind of new it's fun Hold on, before we get, Todd, before you go, hold on. Are you getting a cut if we start selling these things or what? Because you were the first guy that said, hey, we didn't need to sell these things. So do you, does Pitching Ninja get a cut of? Because if so, I want a cut because everyone's going to buy one of these if he comes out and deals. So I want in. <laughs> you know, I, this is one of those things. So I was sitting there minding my own business, just pointing out how he throws a javelin and it was unique. And then the company that actually makes these things and distributes them in Japan said, Hey, Pitching Ninja, would you be interested in this? So I'm, I'm exploring it because I do think there's an opportunity, but I also, you know, I don't want to say that that anything is a cure-all for, you know, it's just not. But uh, is it interesting? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And if you want to cut, let's let's all do it. Why not? I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> You're in. No, I didn't say anything about anyone except I'm head of me. sales. <laughs> just <laughs> AJ. Just You're AJ wrong. and the Ninja. Yep. Absolutely. I'm a Ninja. <laughs> Yeah, you can have different colors for different teams, just like batting gloves. It's real simple, right? Yeah, <laughs> totally. Hey, I want to oh, go. I want to talk a little bit about the splitter. I brought this up a while ago. Why don't we have put pitchers throwing it a lot here in Japan? They're unbelievable at it. I played over there in the Olympics. Played against Jap- Japanese guys all throughout my career. You know, in with Team USA, and it's a nasty pitch. I know it could put strain on the elbow. I understand that. Depends on what kind of grip you have. But there's been a couple guys, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, to name two, that have added it. Um, do you see this coming in, uh, as a rise in, in America now? I definitely do. And I, and I think it had a bad name for a while in America. We kind of stopped teaching it because a lot of the early split-fingered fastball guys got injured. And like anything, we didn't have real studies on it, just like we were talking about the javelin. 
Um, so people just anecdotally said, oh, the splitter is dangerous for your elbow. Well, now that we've done some studies on it, it shows that it's not really that, I mean, it's not more dangerous than a fastball. A fastball pretty much is the most dangerous pitch for your elbow because you're using, yeah, it's, it's, it puts the most force on it. Um, Japan, it's basically the national pitch of Japan. There are multiple versions of splitters. It's not just like, hey, here's my splitter. It's some throw a gyro splitter, throw them through a straight splitter. Other, you know, there's a whole bunch of different grips. They've experimented for all these years. We didn't. And now it's coming back in vogue because you're right. It's really tough to pick up. You have um, Bryce Miller is adding a splitter this year. George Kirby got his splitter from watching my interview with Kevin Gosman, which was pretty cool. Um, and you're going to see a lot of guys, I think, pop on it for exactly the same reason you just said. It's tough to hit. Tough yeah. It's impossible to hit a good one. You guys have faced it, but but not a lot. You didn't see enough of them. I right? got more though at the beginning of my career than the end, because Clemens, they were more they were more in vogue. Yeah, 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 by far. I mean, even like Mulder threw one, and he was lefty. That was something you never saw. Mm-hmm. Tim Hudson, Clemens. There was. Yeah, there they was learned a... to pitch. They learned to pitch. Now guys just throw. Yeah, no. I mean, they, there was a, there was it. more. There was more at the beginning of my career than there was at the end for sure. Gosman was like the only guy there at the end of my career. I was like, oh, he's got this splitter thing. What do we do? And I'm like, well, just don't swing at the low one. Masa. <laughs> Masa here. Masa. Yeah, true. He was another one. He threw more sliders to me, so I didn't really count as split. Hey. Okay, Rob. I was going to say, it is funny because Senga made that adjustment. Everybody's saying, you know, if you see it low, let it go. And then he started throwing fastballs in that same tunnel, and people are getting, you know, punched out on uh-huh fastballs at the knees so they can make those adjustments on it now that everybody's seeing it you know i mean look what Senka did last year with his ghost fork it's like a 60 percent whiff rate yeah Senka was awesome that last thing year. Is, dude, i'm telling you split is nasty man if you can throw a good one it is the best pitch you can throw todd's talked about it Kraut's talked about it if you can make it work jose Contreras used to throw i mean he'd drop down and throw one that was fork ball nasty full yeah. fork ball rob we're being flooded with questions from people wanting to know who your sleepers are, breakouts. I actually added this when we were chatting before the show started, bounce backs. So I don't know if there's certain pitchers you have targeted this year that you like that you've gotten to watch this offseason while many free agents haven't signed. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Tarek Skubal. I think he's fantastic. I, I don't know if you consider him a sleeper because he's not a sleeper to me. I featured him a ton. Um, Cole Reagans is another guy who... Just like, you know, everybody's watching. They made a trade for Chapman, and all of a sudden, this guy became like the best pitcher in the whole league overnight, throwing flames. Um, yeah, he's another one. I'd love to see Hunter Green. Speaking of splitters, he's a guy I would love to see add a splitter. I know he throws a change, but him adding a splitter with that aggressiveness, I think, could take him to another level as well. I don't think he has enough. I don't think he has enough downhill plane. I feel like guys that have down angle, the splitter really works well, but. I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I want to go. You, you mentioned a couple really good lefties. At the end of next, at the end of this season, twenty twenty four, of these three guys, who is going to have the best season? Blake Snell, Jordan Montgomery, Carlos Rodon. Ooh, that's tough. I love Rodon as a bounce back. I think that you didn't. Nobody saw the best Rodon last year, obviously, and he is a freaking stud. And I love him in. I mean, in New York with the fans behind him, he is that guy. So I mean, I'm I'm never gonna pick against Rodon. Um, and maybe I shouldn't here. I'm gonna say Rodon. I love Snell too. Like obviously, whiff rate out the wazoo. Um, you know, I'd love to see where he ends up. Can can. Can he duplicate it? Can Blake Snell duplicate it? Because we always play the whole two Cy Youngs and everything. Can he duplicate his whiff rate? Because his last 20 starts was un- were unbelievable. And was there something that you saw in those last 20 that, okay, he's just going to continue that on this year and have another 1-2 ERA? Yeah, you know, it, it, it was really the, I don't give a crap if I walk anybody. I'm going to outstuff people. And I'm going to take it. I'm not going to give in to hitters. I'm going to continue to throw my hit three pitches with over like a 45% whiff rate, two over 50%. And he knew he can get out of any situation by striking people out if he had to. Um, You know, is that hard? It's hard to thread the needle, obviously. You walk a bunch of people, you're putting people on base. They're bound to score sometime. But his strategy kind of makes sense, and it's a unique approach. Like, there may be other pitchers that take that. Not that there's a lot of pitchers that have ridiculously high whiff rates like he does. He's almost one of a kind. 
but it is a good strategy for a guy like him because walks, you know, everybody has been to told that walks are terrible. Blah, blah. Walks are terrible when they score. And they also run up pitch count, so you wouldn't look at them to go deep in a game. But with that stuff, he can get out of it. So, yeah, I mean, can he duplicate that? That's really tough because it was threading the needle. But is he an elite pitcher? He's got two Cy Youngs. Not many guys get that. No, not not many at all. Um, talking about pitchers, Corbin Burns, bye-bye to Milwaukee. He's going to Baltimore. Are they going to be top dogs for a while now, you think, with this pickup and with this young core coming up too as well? I mean, they have a solid foundation. AL East is going to be a battle as we know it, but Baltimore looks like the team to beat in that division. You nailed it. I mean, I love the Baltimore pitching staff. You add Burns, who knows a, a crap ton about pitching. and I mean, another guy who can win a Cy Young any year. And then you have Kyle Bradish, who has amazing stuff and doesn't get talked about enough, as well as Grayson Rodriguez, who you know, are, has some of the best stuff in baseball. Um, he's another guy that do you consider him a sleeper, a breakout, whatever, maybe a breakout candidate, but he's broken out according to me because I feature him a ton. He's got fantastic stuff. So you're right. The, uh, the Orioles are going to be dangerous. Hey, Rob, I've got a fan question for you. You know, many coming through here. Um, Susie from Bourbon and Baseball actually was just on their show. They were great asking an Astros related question. Was it just mechanics uh, that contributed to Christian Javier's downfall last season, tired for more innings, adding more usage of curve change? I know you've you know talked about him in the past, and I think he lost some ride on his fastball, but he's always just been a curious guy to follow. He's basically just a, a two-pitch guy, and I really have liked following him. But yeah, he was not as effective last year, and it's not like he's old. I don't even think his velo was down that much. Maybe, Maybe a tick? Yeah, it's just little things like that. I mean, Ride is so dependent on how you release the ball, and he just may have made a tiny adjustment and not gotten back to where he was, where his ball was riding through the zone. It's hard to say. Like, you know, those guys with the throw invisibles, sometimes they get seen all of a sudden and people can hit them. So I'm curious to see. I haven't figured out why that was, but it definitely, you know, he definitely got hit harder. And, uh, I think he's a 50-50 shot. Like, I don't know. Um, I have no idea if he's going to solve that or not, but I know he's got some of the best guys on it and somebody's going to be able to compare him what he was doing before and run that down. You've talked uh, to some of the most elite pitchers from past and current pitchers. Who are you most fascinated with or learned the most from that you were like, wow, I had no idea that that was what was just going to happen in this next 30 minutes? Well, for, first for, for me, interviewing Greg Maddox was freaking sick. Like, you know, he's a guy that I watched his career. Um, great dude answered all my questions. And I, you know, as a, as a fan of Greg Maddox, you know, and since I followed him, was able to ask him a ton of stuff. He had a really interesting answer. Well, two, one is he threw this ridiculous two seamer and, and he said, number, num, number one, he remembered what I was talking about and he's thrown how many pitches in his career. He's like, oh yeah, that one was absolutely nasty. And he remembered the ball had a scuff on it when he threw it, which is why it broke so much. So that kind of almost broke the internet this off season when we, when I posted that stuff. Um, and then his, his cutter release was unique. I thought you Darvish was amazing. Like you Darvish's ability to break down pitching and talk about things. And we go back to the javelin conversation about pitchers get into it. They, they repeat their delivery so much that sometimes it's actually detrimental to them and they have to throw at multiple deliveries to jump up a tier in the way they throw. So you Darvish was talking about throwing out of multiple deliveries and changing his stuff and bullpens just to break out of the monotony of a routine and, and his pitching mechanics. That's another where what place the javelin can help. But also he like said, we were sitting on screen and he taught me how to throw a cutter in a way that I've never heard anybody talk about it, which is, you know, you just push your two fingers down here like this, your, your pinky and your, your ring finger down and your fingers automatically make a cutting motion. It's like, if you just think about that, your ball, you, you know, that's basically a simple cutter. So the way he thinks about pitching and the fact that he said when he's retired, he wants to, he doesn't want to be a pitching coach. He wants to be a pitching grip coach because he's thought it all through with his, however many pitches he throws like 13 and you can, make it even to even more because he's got a slow curve, fast curve, all this stuff. So brilliant, dude. He's a freak. He would be able to, he, he can probably, <laughs> he can pitch left-handed just as well as he can pitch right-handed. I, I didn't see the crazy. entire Maddox interview, 
but I saw some of the highlights. Did you ever hit on, does he think, or do you think, he would even be a number two or three in the big leagues right now? Yeah, that's a great question. He did say when he came up, he was throwing, he said he topped out 93, 94 and was a hard thrower. It wasn't like he was, you know, towards the end of his career where he wasn't throwing all that hard. It's like, you know, I threw kind of hard, especially on a slower gun back in the day. Um, so it wasn't, you know, he could have been developed into a hard thrower. He still believes in his mentality of, you know, velocity is like the last important thing. It's movement, mostly location that that gets folks out. He did. We didn't touch specifically on that question, but I mean, he is he is in awe of the pitchers today that we did touch on. He thought like Jacob Degrom was because he worked with him at Texas. He said. He, the guy's a freak. He, he puts the ball exactly where he wants to. The movement is great. He knows exactly how to pitch. And he was just blown away by how good Jacob deGrom was. So he does not consider himself a better guy than Jacob deGrom, which I thought was interesting. Rob, you, you mentioned two things. One, did, did Greg Maddox offer to pee on your leg in the shower? Because he's famous <laughs> for that. <laughs> or did you ask him if he could? I, I thought that might be a little awkward in our first interview. Maybe a follow-up. <laughs> I might do that. Good he didn't have anyone to distract you. What was it? Smoltz said he was the distractor, so Greg could get the guy. So you didn't have anyone to distract you, so you knew it was coming. Okay, that's fair. So the, I did ask him about that, and he said all of that stuff was made up. He doesn't know where any of that came from. Mm, that, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Every every player that ever played with him made it all yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you you mentioned you Darvish. I played with you Darvish when he first came over, 2013, with the Rangers. And, and people ask you, you know, one of the questions the catcher you always get is, who, who's the who's the best pitcher you ever caught, or who's the best? And I always say, well, you got to quantify this because is it the best stuff I've ever seen, or is it the best actual pitcher I've ever caught? Because like they're they're completely different things, right? So, I, and I tell people the best stuff I've ever seen was you, Darvish, right? And the thing you mentioned him having thirteen different pitches and this and that. Could you just get him to throw more fastballs so he can go more than five innings and not try to strike everybody out? Because for ten plus years now. If he could just figure out how to get qu some quick outs instead of, you know, slider, slider, cutter, curveball. I mean, this guy could be one of the best pitchers in the game still. Do you remember when he would fa he'd always face the opposing pitcher back when pitchers would hit and never throw them a fastball? I know oh. in his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wouldn't throw anybody a fastball if he didn't have to. He would literally, <laughs> before the game, be like, you, okay, let's try to throw fastballs this game. Okay. He'd throw one first pitch. It would spike in the dirt. And they'd be like, oh, no more. Right to the cutter, right to the slider, right to the curveball. And you're just like, dude, do you know you throw 97? And the ball goes, Whew! It's amazing. And he's got this, he has two-seamer, has a ton of run on it, um, which he likes. Like, I see him front hip guys sometimes, and I think he likes that pitch. But, oh, my God. Like, like I was, I'd scream at my screen sometimes watching him. Again, throwing, throwing to a pitcher who you know can't hit. And he's throwing them splitters and curveballs and everything. I'm like, throwing fastball, this guy's not going to hit that either. I mean, just throw it right down the middle. He's going to get it. But uh, I don't like, you know, you you is a brilliant, he's like a scientist out there. I, I love watching him throw. I love his insight on the game. And uh, fantastic guy. And also funny as crap. Do you have any good you Darvish stories? Like, he's a funny dude. I mean, I got lots of you Darvish stories. None of them I can really tell right now. Really? <laughs> I play with them for a full. Like, They're rated some, R, you Darvish We had some stories? serious. You guys did? Oh, yeah. Because of what we just talked about. We I had, like that. We had a couple where it was like, we went at it, at it. Wow. On the mound, in Oakland one time, in the mound, on the mound. We Ooh. went at it. Okay, can we find that video? I'm going to go find saw that. It. Yeah, it was true. <laughs> that was when Oakland was good. That was when they had Donaldson. MLB might have dubbed it out. No, they, 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 were, they were, that was when Oakland was good. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, but listen, you you knew pitching. You knew, he knew how to pitch. He knew how to, what he was doing. He just wanted to strike everybody out. He didn't care. Three two. He's like, I'm strike. I want to strike. He would go 0 two and go boom boom. You're like, okay, if we just throw another fastball, this guy's done. He's like, slider, curveball. He was out of his time. That's what he everyone just, wants yeah, to do now. Exactly. He was. He was. You're right. And he, dude, his stuff is literally the best stuff I've ever seen. Really? Seriously. Catching what? I mean, he and when he wanted to, he could go pshoo, boom. Like Maddox could hit anything. You Darvish was that. I mean, I'm telling you, you Darvish was unbelievable. 
I got to talk to him about that. We'll uh, we'll give him that compliment first. Like I think he'll I think he'll dig that. Um, Maddox is exactly the opposite, right? Maddox is like, if I can get you out on one pitch, that is fantastic. And you know, old school doesn't show you anything the first time through. Then it unveils different pitches. Um, you know, he thought of the game in a totally different level, which was just being as efficient as possible. He doesn't care how you get it out. So Rob, let's finish with this. I think that the last time I had you on was the first time, which was soon after the Scherzer sticky stuff situation, which we covered at length. And we had Scherzer on a couple of days before all of that happened. My question is just about the baseball. I know it's going to come up in spring training. We still don't have that you know, tacky baseball that people talk about, but it's there overseas. So just wondering if you've heard anything about it and if you're mentally preparing for the complaints and the articles to come about in the next month over the fact that we still don't have a solution for the grip that some people are looking for. Yeah. You know, they tried to do it. They've experimented with a bunch of different things and the metrics on pitches just took off. Like people aren't going to be able to hit it if it's too sticky. So I think that's what they're trying to play with. Um, you know, I don't think they have it down yet. I would love to see it. I mean, obviously, and they've, they've solved it in, in Japan and other countries, there's no reason why we can't do it except it may make pitchers nastier, which I'm all for. Like, let's make pitchers. <laughs> let's. Let, I mean, if there's no hits and everybody strikes out, just think of the content I get. That's all I care. About. Mm. <laughs> there's darn, so many swords through those darn hitters. <laughs> so many swords. Okay, yeah, I gotta ask that. Can you can you explain? Because you came up with the sword. Can you explain it? Because. My kid yells, sword, and the guy just swings and misses it like a regular. I'm like, wait, well, I thought it had to be like a funny swing. It's a stat now too, right? It is a stat. I love that. Like they, I had to sit down with a spreadsheet of pitches. It's basically, uh, the idea of a sword is, is it is a funny swing. It's a it's a check swing where the hitter doesn't know, you know, makes up his mind late or tries to stop too late. Um, so it, it is not a full swing. And I know some guys, some folks get that wrong. But I had to sit down with a spreadsheet and go sword, not a sword, 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 not a sword to help train the analytics that MLB has to create this statistic, which is, you know, it's, it's tough being a pitching ninja, right? Like I get to watch baseball all day and help MLB mm. by looking through a spreadsheet of stuff. Now, it isn't quite the Todd Frazier, no hands home run type thing, which I don't oh, know how Jesus. he did to this day. Um, is that a sword? <laughs> what would you call that? What would you call that? Magic? How did you do that? Like that? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Know, it. My old <laughs> high school coach said, "Throw the throw the hands to the ball," and I literally just <laughs> put my hands to the ball. So, Ken Frank, appreciate it. <laughs> I'm gonna it's put legendary. that. Uh, I'll put that out maybe tomorrow uh, for folks to see. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. It's that simple, right? Throw your hands at the ball, and every once in a while, totally that simple. You don't even it's need your simple. hands. Totally <laughs> that simple. Yep. That's all there is. Just throw your hands at the ball, guys. <laughs> Who cares? Thanks, Todd. Thanks for ruining it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, right. Now there be so good. many kids like uh, I yeah. threw my bat. I threw my <laughs> hands at the ball. <laughs> I hit the ump in the face. <laughs> Maybe I should show that swing against Verlander then to follow it up. Oh no, 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 we don't want that one. <laughs> we don't we We've don't all want been that. there. That would be We've a sport. Done that, would that be a sport or what? If what you ain't you... done it, you ain't done it. Is that, yeah. a sword? That, that was a sword. Without right. a doubt, that would be considered a sword. Absolutely. Right. I, 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 I thank you for clarifying this because yeah. it irritates me when there's like a swing and miss and they're like, sword. It's not a sword. <laughs> That's not a sword. <laughs> I agree. Thank with you. You, you were the originator of it. It was first first clarified here. Totally agree with you. Good. High schoolers now know. Well, Rob, awesome catching up with you. Appreciate it. Obviously, um, check out uh, Pitching Ninja on everywhere. Uh, Twitter, TikTok, the YouTube channel, the whole deal. We'll post all of this. But good to catch up with you and happy almost spring training. Awesome. Thanks. Great. Wait, Rob. Great. Wait, before yep. you go, what kind of chair do you have? Because that one looks cool. Oh, that's a gamer it chair. It is. It's, it's like a uh, – I got this for free, too. It was Ooh. sick. Yeah, that's have good back price. support. Does how have does good it, back support? How does it feel? Yeah, it's great. How does it feel? It's on an the E-win. Tush? How does it feel? On everything the like there? I, you know how much I sit in a chair all day, so I that's have why to I have asked. a good chair. It's great. It's an E-win gaming chair. Ah, okay. okay. I might does it reach have, out. Does it have like a rumble pack and everything in it? When like, <laughs> you, you die, you're like, oh, yeah. the chair shakes. <laughs> <laughs> it should. That'd be sick. <laughs> We're going to look into it for AJ. It's been a big, big chair debate today for, for poor AJ's back. 
Maybe I can get one for AJ. I'll contact that would be see if they could throw you. I'll, I'll send you he a... Just bought, he just bought one. He doesn't need a new one. You need no, I need, a, I need a cooler looking we one. We can though. return it. Yeah, that, well, yeah, no, you're going to have to untake it. You're going to have to un... Whatever. I can take it in. I know how to return things. Okay. Rob, thank you. Good to see you, man. <laughs> Good to see you. Take care, guys. Cheers.